and welcome to Piccolo Stitchworks. My name is Nicole and today I'm going to be talking about all of my works in progress or whips. Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery is hosting a whip along and the goal of this make along is to list out all of your current works in progress, which could be knitting, crocheting, sewing, or any other kind of crafting that you have in progress, and then commit to trying to finish at least half of your list by the end date, which is July 21st. It did start back in January, so the idea was to have six months to do it. Um, so I did get a little bit of a start already on my projects and have completed a few of them. Uh, but I wanted to talk about all of the projects that I have on my list and which ones I'm going to try to finish for the whip along. If you want to join in, you can check out the hashtag Crimson Whip Along on Instagram or join Anishka's uh, Crimson Stitchery Patreon account, and then you can join on the Discord server as well. I only had a few works in progress that were actually in progress but I wanted to make the most of this uh, make a long project. So I decided to include projects that I have the yarn for, know what I'm gonna make, and I just haven't actually cast it on yet. Cause I actually tend to only work on a few projects at a time. I'll have like a sweater project, a quick or easy type project that I can do while I'm watching TV or doing other things. And then maybe like a gift knit or something. I might have three, maybe four projects going at a time. Um, but I did want to include other things that I consider mental whips, where it's like mentally I'm invested in this project happening, I just haven't started it yet. So in total I have 18 projects on my list. So my goal is to finish nine of them by the end of the whip along, which I think I can do. I actually already finished three because two of them were well, I was well into the project when the whip along started, and then one of them was a super quick thing that took only a couple days. So I think I can do nine. I think I'll probably actually do more than that, but you know, we'll see. So I'm going to start off by talking about the three projects that I already finished. The first of which is the sweater that I'm wearing right now, which is the Secret Crush sweater by Veronica Lindbergh. And it's from her Knit This Book, which I have been following her on Instagram and YouTube for a while. And when I heard she was coming out with a book, I knew I would want to have it. And it's just, it's such a pretty thing to even just have on your shelf and sort of use for inspiration because she does really lovely photography. Um, but I knew I wanted to knit this sweater as well as one other one that I have on my whip list. So I will talk about that soon. I think the back of my hem came out a little longer than I would have ideally wanted. I think when I blocked it, I stretched it a little bit too much. Um, so I might, at some point rip out a few rows of that if I find that I feel like it's too long, but I'm just gonna wear it for a while for now and see how I like it. And the yarn is Plymouth Yarn Tuscan Air, which is a blown yarn. So there's like a tube of fiber and then there's fibers blown into the tube, which makes it super light and airy, which I really love for this pattern. I think it, because it's so chunky, it's kind of nice that it's very light. It doesn't feel heavy to wear. Number two on my list was the Fall Romper by Benja Kirk, which is a little baby romper. And this is for my new nephew. Um, I have to say I was a little disappointed in this pattern. I felt like the instructions weren't very clear, especially right at the beginning when you start at the bottom. I had to kind of zoom in on the picture and try to figure out what it was supposed to mean based on the pictures rather than really understanding the instructions. Um, but once I got going, I felt like it was okay, but there also weren't really any finished measurements or like a schematic or anything to go by. And since I'm knitting this for my nephew who doesn't live near me, I couldn't measure him or try it on him. So I ended up looking up some other patterns that had more measurements to try to get a gauge of what I should be shooting for. So that was a little bit disappointing. Um, but overall, I do think it turned out really cute. And my favorite part is that I made a matching one for a little Hazel Village friend for him as well. This is Max the raccoon, and he even has a little tail spot for his tail to fit through his romper. So we've got a little matching set, which I'm very excited to gift to them. Number three on my list, which is also a finished object, is the Schoolhouse Hat by Courtney Kelly. And this is actually a free pattern, and it's a little cap that ties under the chin. It's sort of vintage inspired. It reminds me of like, 1940s or 50s ice skaters or something. I've seen a few patterns like this and I've always wanted to do one. And this is actually hand spun yarn, which is the first time I've ever knit with my own hand spun yarn. I started spinning back in July last year and have just sort of been experimenting with it, but I hadn't actually knit anything. Um, my yarn is still very thick and thin and I didn't really know if it would knit up well, but I was watching 
um, Jillian Eve's YouTube channel, which if you're into spinning and weaving or pretty much fiber arts in general, definitely check out her channel because she has a ton of helpful videos and uh, tutorials and all kinds of things. So she was saying in one of her videos that um, you should really try to work with your yarn, even if you feel like it's not perfect, because you're going to learn something from that. And so that's what kind of gave me that boost to say, OK, I'm just going to try to make a project. And so I just made a simple little hat, which I actually have, if I can find it in my giant basket here. Oh, here we go. I have a little bit more of the yarn, or actually quite a bit of the yarn left. Um, so I have to decide what else I want to make with it. But it, it's um, mixed BFL or blue faced Lester fiber that I spun up and I just love the way it feels. It's really soft. I think BFL tends to be a little bit less soft than Merino, but I actually feel like this is really soft and not scratchy at all. I do think I'm going to add some embroidered flowers or something to just dress it up a little bit and make it something a little bit more special. Um, but I'm still considering it a finished object because it's technically a wearable piece and it's all blocked and everything. So if I decide to add flowers later, then it'll just be something extra. Okay, now on to my works in progress. The first one is the Magnolide sweater by Olga Putano, which looks like this so far. This is uh, Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply that I used for the color work. And then this other color is the um, Valley Yarns Charlemont, which is a merino, silk, and nylon blend. Uh, and so I have two colors of that, this dark purple and then sort of a more pinky purple. As you can see, I've made pretty good progress on this sweater. I started it in June 2022, but there were a couple reasons I set it aside. One was um, I wanted to work on a pattern design in which I ended up publishing, which was my Harvest Sky sweater, which was a lot of color work. And then I wanted to do Andrea Mowry's um, Alpenglow for Rhinebeck, which is another color work sweater. So I had put a pause on this to do those, and then I felt like I wanted to do something a little different and not another color work sweater. So I decided to just accept that I was setting it aside for a little while and not you know, push myself to feel like I need to finish it before I can do anything else. But I also, there were a couple other things. I want to change out the color that I used for the ribbing on the neck. I was initially going to use that as the rest of the body, but I just didn't really like the way that that color looked with the, how it looked against the other colors that I chose. So I ended up picking out this pinky purple. So I'm going to go back and change this to the pinkish purple color instead. And the other thing was the ribbing is done in uh, fisherman's rib and it just came out kind of wonky. It's sort of like diagonal and then curves a little bit. And it, I think I should have sized down more needle sizes to have it suck in a little bit more. So I think I'm going to rip that out as well. I might even just do regular ribbing instead of the fisherman's rib because I just didn't really like the way that that turned out. So it needs a little bit of extra attention. And I don't know if I will finish it for this whip along, honestly. I just am so excited about some of my other projects. I know I will get back to it and I will finish it, but I might not do it by July. Okay, next is the Marilla's Mittens pattern by Amy Shear, which I definitely knew I wanted to make when I saw her post on Instagram when she was working on this pattern. I just love the detail of this design. It sort of looks like little buds and some lace. They're really beautiful. And I'm doing the convertible mitten style. You can do them either in um, fingerless, regular mittens or convertible. And I thought it'd be really nice to have a pair of convertible mittens because I don't have any like that. The yarn I used for this is Luma by The Fiber Co, which is a uh, merino, cotton, linen, and silk blend. It's a really lovely yarn. I actually used this for the headband pattern that I'm designing, um, and I wanted a pair of mittens that would sort of coordinate with the headband, even though they're different colors. The headband is more of a lighter turquoise, and then this one is a darker color, but I thought they would look nice together. I actually didn't intend on making this much progress on these mittens, but I was looking for a simple project that I could work on while I was playing some board games with my family. My family is very into board games and not just like quick, you know, 30 minute games. Most of them take like two hours, which is great. I love them as well, but it's kind of nice to have a knitting project to work on sort of between turns or while I'm strategizing. And so it has to be something simple that I don't really need to focus that much on. And I didn't have a project like that at the moment when I was jumping into some games. So I decided to cast on the cuffs of these mittens 
and I was assuming I would just set them aside after that and get back to the rest of the mittens later. But then I got really curious about how the lace was going to turn out, so I just kept going on this one, and I got to the bind off edge of the inner part of the hand, and then next is to start or to finish the rest of the min on this hand. So I might set these aside and still work on some other projects and then come back to them, but we'll see. They keep drawing my attention, so maybe I'll just finish them. But I definitely will finish them by the end of the whip along, or at least that's my plan. Next up is the Fluorite Socks by Andrea Mowry, which I'm knitting with Yorkshire West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4-ply, and it's this fun pink and purple, and there's a little bit of like a mauvey brown sort of color in there. And I liked the idea of this pattern because it's knit inside out, and I've turned it to the right side, which is reverse stockinette, and then it has a little bit of stockinette for the toe. And I wanted to also try this because it uses the flegal heel, which Andrea Mowry says is her favorite heel construction, so I really wanted to try it. And so far, so good. I'm at the point of increasing for the heel gusset, and then um, after that, I think it's sort of like short rows to do the the um, the heel turn, but I haven't gotten that far yet, so I'm not totally sure. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. I made pretty good progress on these. My other pair of socks that I made were uh, DK weight and size US 3 needles. These are US 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles, so they feel very tiny, <laughs> but they're still coming along pretty quickly, so I'm excited about these. My last technical work in progress is this sad little start of a shawl. <laughs> this is supposed to be the uh, Coming Together Shawl by Lisa K. Ross. It's a really lovely pattern with all these color work sections with different patterns and designs. But for some reason, the beginning of this was just bothering me. The way that it wants to lay is sort of strange. It wants to kind of curl up at the end. And I restarted a few times trying to fix my gauge so that it would hang more flat. And it probably would get a little bit better with blocking, but something about it was just bothering me. So I set it aside and I think I'm actually going to just do a different shawl. I think I just want to do like a simple garter stitch striped shawl or something with this yarn because, again, I like to have projects that I can like play while I'm or work on while I'm playing a board game or take on a road trip, which I'm actually going on a road trip in a week or so. So maybe I'll take this as my project. Um, but I have these beautiful colors of Cloudborn Alpaca Sport, which is a discontinued yarn, but I had picked these up from Webs. They have a lot of the closeouts from Cloudborn. Uh, well, Cloudborn in general just isn't a brand anymore, so all of their yarn ended up at Webs, and I have quite a bit of it in my stash. I'll have some other projects to show you that, that also are Cloudborn yarn, but this is the Alpaca Sport. And I picked out these beautiful colors and had been wanting to make a shawl for a while, but I hadn't gotten around to it yet. So that's why I just decided to start one, but that one didn't really end up working out. So I'm, I'm still very excited to knit with these colors. I knit my Joe's shawl with this yarn as well. Um, so I know that I like it. <laughs> okay, now onto the giant basket of yarn. <laughs> this is all for the projects that I'm planning, but haven't actually started yet. And this is just one skein of each yarn, so I have a lot more in my stash of multiples of these skeins. But let's jump in. The first one is um, this yarn, again, from the Fiber Co., which is the Road to China Light, and it's alpaca, silk, camel, and cashmere. So it's very luxurious feeling. And I just picked up one skein because I wanted to treat, myse treat myself to something special. And I think I'm going to use this for a design that I want to do of just some fingerless mitts. So I haven't thought too much about this project yet. I have a couple little sketches, but I think I'm going to try to start this one as one of my next couple projects. Actually, the next one on my list I don't have the yarn for here because it was a gift for my dad for Christmas. I gave him this beautiful skein of Plymouth Yarn uh, Reserve Sport Solid which is a very luxurious feeling yarn. And so I gave him this charcoal colored skein of it as a Christmas gift. And I said, whatever you want me to knit for you, if it's a pair of hand warmers or ear warmer or something along those lines or a cowl. And I think he wants me to do a headband because he has this hat that's sort of short. It doesn't cover his ears and he likes it that way, but it would be nice to have a headband that kind of goes over it and 
turns it into a little bit of a warmer hat. So he still has the yarn for that, and he has to give me some more details about what he wants, and then I can start on that project. Uh, but I do want to try to get that done for him in the next month or so, so hopefully that'll be one of my finished for this whip along projects. Next on my list is the Luma sweater by Sari Nordland. And this yarn is the Bloom Tweed Worsted by Sea Change Fibers, which is a really lovely sort of tonal yarn with little flecks of different colors in it. And I picked this up at Woolen Folk when I went last year, and I wanted to make a hat with it, but I kept procrastinating because I feel like I have enough headwear, and I just did that little kind of bonnet style hat, which is pretty much the only sort of style that I wanted but don't really have, but I have a ton of hats. So I decided to change my direction with this and actually use it as the color work of part of a sweater. So another uh, Cloudborn from my stash, this is the Highland Fingering. I've made a couple other sweaters using this yarn, and one of them was held double to create sort of a worsted or bulky weight yarn. So I think that'll work well to match with this worsted. And I think the colors look really nice together, so I'm excited about that. I'm almost tempted to start that next because I feel like I could probably get it done before the weather starts warming up too much here in the Northeast US. Um, and then I could have another cozy sweater to wear for at least a month or two, but we'll see. It's hard to choose which thing to do next. Next up is actually from a project that I just frogged. I filmed the process, so I'm hoping to do a video of the whole process of frogging a completely finished object and turning it into a new project. This yarn is Lola by Sublime Yarns, and it's 100% merino, and it's a super bulky weight, I believe, and it's this pretty sort of periwinkle color. And my partner actually gifted, the, gifted this to me for Christmas one year, and so I thought that was really sweet that he had picked it out himself, and I wanted to make something special that I would wear a lot, so I made it into this kind of bomber jacket style sweater, but I just didn't end up getting a lot of wear out of it, mostly because the yarn that I picked for the sleeves to go with it was not nearly as nice quality, and so it just didn't really do it justice. So I decided to frog it, and I'm going to make the beginner Brioche Slipover by Mini Me Knit Designs. I have knit one of her patterns before and I really liked it, so I thought that would be a good choice for this yarn because it's for the super bulky weight. And now that I've done a brioche project or a brioche in the round type project, uh, I feel like that'll be actually pretty easy. And I'm looking forward to turning this into something beautiful. Okay, next is the other project that I'm doing from the Knit This book which is the honey cardigan. And it's a, I think it's fisherman's rib. Yes, half fisherman's rib stitch pattern. Uh, so it's supposed to be in a, a brushed alpaca, which is nice and fluffy. And so for that, I'm using the Cloudborn brushed alpaca wool DK, which is, I've used this yarn before for a sweater. I did it in a blue color and I really enjoyed that sweater. It's super cozy. So I know I'm going to enjoy this yarn, and I picked it out in this fun bright pink color. I like having a project that is from a book because it's sort of nice to have a break from screens. I mostly knit from patterns that are PDFs on my phone, so there's something just kind of nice and relaxing about using an actual paper book to knit a pattern, so I'm excited to, to work on this one. Next, I have another special skein of yarn that I got at Woolen Folk. This is Botanical Yarns, and they're from the UK, so it was kind of fun to um, have this opportunity to see their yarn in person. And it's a Baby Surrey Alpaca and Silk. And it's the Hellborn Peach color, so it's a really lovely sort of peachy pink. And what I'm going to do with this is the Reset Cardi by La Maison Rilile. I wanted to make something that would be like a fancy sort of cardigan that I could wear with formal wear if I'm going to like a wedding or something. Um, I don't really have anything like that and it's sort of hard to find a layer or a layering piece that works well with more formal dresses. So I thought this brushed Surrey alpaca would be a nice sort of dressy and fun piece that I could wear over dresses. And I have a lot of things that are in the pink family, so I think that this will work well with a lot of my wardrobe. So I'm really excited to work on this. My only issue is that I got three skeins of it. Oh, and I'm going to 
hold it double with this merino lace by Haiku. 100% merino. Just to thicken it up a little bit and I kind of liked the idea of lightening up the collar and creating a little bit of a um, marled. I couldn't think of that word for a minute. Create a little bit of a marled effect with the yarn. But the issue is that I ordered or I bought three of these but unfortunately one of them had a little bit of a, um, a mishap with the dyeing. It had like a bright yellowy green spot in it which I know with hand dyed yarn you know those things can happen or there can be like variations and things so it wasn't a huge deal but I did reach out to them because it did kind of you know it was a pretty strong contrast of a completely different color and so I reached out to the customer service and they were really nice about it and they're going to send me another skein but from the UK unfortunately there was some issues with shipping recently and so they had sent out an email saying that things might take a little bit longer so it hasn't arrived yet and so I haven't started it, but I am kind of anxious to, to do this because I have a wedding coming up in April that I'm going to, so it would be nice to have this project done, but we'll see. I might have enough with the yarn that I have, but I'm not totally sure, so I, I can't decide if I want to just start it and then wait for the other skein to arrive or if I should wait for it to arrive first, but we'll see. I do want to finish this for the whip along as well. My next project on my list is the Hypnosis Sweater by Makiko Garznie, which is from this Japanese Rowan book. I saw this picture on Instagram. I just thought it was so amazing the way they created this design that looks like watercolor. And so I had to hunt it down and it turns out it's only in Japanese. So I decided to buy it anyway because um, Japanese patterns are really interesting. They're mostly just charts and diagrams. There's not a lot of text. So the fact that it's not in English, I feel like I could I could figure it out. Um, and I did find some videos on YouTube that I think are going to help to at least translate enough of it to understand what the directions say. But for the most part, it's just following a chart. It's definitely going to be a challenge because it's mostly um, intarsia color work and there's all these different you know sections of different combinations of two strands of yarn. So these are the colors that I picked and I probably sat on the floor at Webbs for like an hour picking these colors because I really wanted to have that sort of tonal color or um, colors from sort of a single color family of like bluey greens but have enough contrast that the color work would actually show up. But then some sections are done with like two strands of one and then some are done with one strand of one and one strand of the other color. And so there's all these combinations to create more of a gradient effect into the different designs. So I'm really happy with the colors I chose. I hope that this works out well. And I know that this is going to be a bit of a longer term project and you know it's going to take a lot of focus to figure out the pattern. So I probably won't finish this one by July, but I would like to get started on it. I think it's going to be a really special project, so I'm very excited. Next up is the Lauren Sweater by Vicky Chan, and I'm using Big Sky Yarn Co. Squish DK for the color work section. And this color is the Fall is in the Air. And so it's got lots of pinks and turquoise and sort of gold tones in it. And then to coordinate with that, I picked up this um, Tacky Yarns Classic Superwash, which is 100% superwash wool. And so this plays off of that sort of teal turquoise color in there, and I think it's going to go really nicely together. And I picked up this yarn when I was traveling. I was visiting my family in Tennessee, and so I wanted to go to a yarn shop and just pick out something special to kind of remember the trip. And it's been waiting for the perfect project. I think I've changed my mind about what project I wanted to make with this like five times, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do the Lauren sweater. I think the floral sort of design in the top will look really nice with this color colorway since it has a lot of florally colors in it. I'm not totally sure if I'm going to do this one during the whip along. I've got quite a few sweater projects, so I think I need to narrow it down and just commit to doing a few of them, but I'm also okay with just leaving it open and seeing what I feel like casting on next once I finish the first couple that I have planned. All right, next we have another Cloudborn yarn project. This is again the uh, Highland Fingering yarn that I'm uh, using two of the colors. And then I also have this, um, another Alpaca Sport for the third color. And this is gonna be for the Saley cardigan by um, Alex Bird. 
And I've always wanted to try one of her um, Rusamin um, technique patterns, which is an Estonian technique that um, she's really, she has a bunch of patterns with that technique. And it's a really cool way of doing color work where you hold the strands across the outside of the yarn or outside of the work to create the design. So I'm excited to try that. It will also be my first time steaking because this is a cardigan that is steaked. So I'm looking forward to having this be sort of a fun trying new things project. I'm going to use this brown as the main color and then these two colors for the color work design. So I like that it has sort of a natural autumnal color scheme and I'll probably start this one maybe late summer so that I have it for the fall, but I just need more cardigans in my knit wardrobe. So I'm excited to work on that one. All right, we're on the home stretch. Two more projects. Next is the uh, Machu Picchu Socks by Irina Gorskaya. Um, and this is another, <laughs> another Cloudborn. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna be happy when I'm done with all my Cloudborn, Cloudborn stash because I feel like I talk about it too much. <laughs> But uh, this is their Highland Superwash Sock Twist. And this is the hand paint, and then this is just a solid color. So um, this will be color work. I think it's actually, um, it's worked in mosaic color work, so slipped stitches, which I'm interested to try. The Alpenglow sweater by Andrea Mowry used that technique. I don't necessarily prefer it to stranded color work, but it's kind of nice to change it up and try something different. I'm trying to test out different heel constructions so I can decide like what my go-to heel construction will be if I really get into sock knitting. So far, I've just done the heel flap style and then the flegal heel is the one I'm trying with the fluorite socks. And then this is gonna be the short row heel. So we'll see how I like that. Okay, last project on my list, which is the Date Night Sweater by Kadri. And this is Merino Textura by Plymouth Select. And it is part superwash and part regular merino wool. And when I saw this, in person, I just loved the texture and the color of it. It's such a rich emerald green and it has these sort of um, thick and thin textures to it. And it really reminds me of hand spun. And I don't usually gravitate towards green or I didn't used to really gravitate towards green, but this really caught my eye. And I feel like since I bought this, I've just really been interested in greens more. I think I got this last summer or fall and I've been really excited to make a sweater out of it. I really wanted to make a holiday sweater last year, but I didn't get to it because I had some other um, gift knits that I was working on. So I'm hoping to get it done for this Christmas. And I don't want it to be too like in your face Christmassy with like a Christmas tree on it or anything, but I thought the date night sweater, it has sort of this little bobble design and lace design that kind of reminds me of Holly which I think is just sort of a hint towards holiday, but I could still wear it other times of the year and not feel like I'm wearing a Christmas sweater. But also the color, of course, has a really nice Christmassy feel to it. So I'll probably do this one in the fall leading up to next holiday season and not do it for the whip along, but I can't wait to work with this yarn because it's just so soft and nice. Okay, we made it to the end of my list, which was 18 projects and I'm hoping to finish at least nine of them by July 21st. And if you want to join in, that hashtag is Crimson Whip Along on Instagram, or you can check out Anishka's um, Crimson Stitchery Patreon account, which I will link down below, as well as to her YouTube channel where you can see her video about the Whip Along as well. Well, I'm going to get knitting, so I'll see you in my next video. Bye!